Welcome to Crayola Creativity Week. Today's theme is Flows Like Water. Our special guests are NASA scientists, Dr. David Grinspoon and Dr. Cynthia Phillips, U.S. Poet Laureate Ada Limon and illustrator Peter Cease. I'm Dr. David Grinspoon, Senior Scientist for Astrobiology Strategy at NASA Headquarters. In that job, I helped to plan NASA's investigations of possible life in the universe. I love science and teaching and sharing my experiences. I've also authored several popular science books. My dad was an author as well, and my brother writes books too, so I guess it runs in the family. And I'm also a musician. I play guitar and I write songs, and I love playing music with other people. I've been on a lot of television and radio shows, which is fun because I love to communicate about science. Hi, I'm Dr. Cynthia Phillips and I'm a planetary geologist at the NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory in California. I'm also the science communications lead and a project staff scientist for NASA's Europa Clipper mission. My background is in science, but it's also an artistic one. I played the viola as a child, and I come from a family of nerdy art and science people. My mom was a painter as well as a math teacher, and my engineer father also writes poetry. I was fortunate enough to study astrophysics and then find my way to the field of planetary science in graduate school, where I got to work with new data from Jupiter's moon Europa from the Galileo mission. I used images to create new observations of the surface that are both scientifically useful and also are very beautiful. Hi, I'm Ada Limon, author of In Praise of Mystery. I love all the arts, especially visual art, theatrical performances, dance, and creative writing. My mom, Stacia Brady, was a ceramic artist and a painter, and her sculptures and paintings have always inspired me. In fact, she has done the covers of all of my collections of poems. When she took a break from art to become a horse ranch manager, we connected with nature in new ways and animals in new ways. My dad was also inspired by the arts. He played guitar, wrote poems, and while I was in high school, I too fell in love with poetry. I am honored to have been named the 24th Poet Laureate of the United States, the first Latina to serve in the role, and the first to have been appointed to a second two-year term. Hello, I'm Peter Cease. I've been an artist my whole life. My mother was an artist, my father was a filmmaker. They encouraged me to draw. Gradually, I became an artist. I went to art schools and started to do some animated films. I began illustrating uh, newspapers, magazines, children's books, write my own books. And I realized how great it is to have some subject which sort of is inspiring and full of, full of magic and working on the place of mystery was this kind of experience, wonderful opportunity to put my imagination into action. David, please tell us about the fascinating field of astrobiology. Astrobiology is the science that studies the origin, evolution, distribution, and future of life in the universe. It's the way we use science to address the question of whether or not we're alone in the universe. Earth is habitable because obviously Earth supports life. We're here. <laughs> and the question is, uh, you know, when we study other planets and we want to know if they can also support life, another way of saying that is we're trying to understand if there is habitability on those planets. One thing that we find always is that where there's water, there's life, and where there's no water, there's no life. When we're looking for life elsewhere, we follow the water. Cynthia, please tell us about interfaces and hypothermal activity. An interface is a place where one material touches another kind of material, or a place where one kind of conditions makes way for another kind of conditions. Since life is sustained by a series of ongoing chemical reactions, in order to keep those reactions going, we need some sort of change. Like how if you place a ball flat on the ground, nothing happens. But if you place it on a hill, it'll roll down that slope. 
There's much more life on the ocean floor and the coastlines rather than just somewhere random in the ocean. That's because you're at, at an interface, you're at an edge where things are mixing and flowing together. So when we think about life on other planets, we're very interested in looking at the interfaces between different parts of an environment. Cynthia, please tell us about the Europa Clipper mission spacecraft and what is engraved on it. Europa Clipper is a mission that NASA is sending to Jupiter's moon Europa. It's a small moon about the size of Earth's moon. We think that the surface is covered with a layer of ice, and under that ice is a layer of liquid water, a giant liquid water ocean. On Europa, we think that the ice water interface at the bottom of the ice shell and the top of the ocean is a good place to look for life, and also the water rock interface at the bottom of the ocean. Both of these are places where the conditions within Europa change quickly over a small distance. And this change in conditions could produce the difference in conditions to allow chemical reactions to take place. Europa Clipper will orbit Jupiter and it'll have about 50 close flybys of Europa. And on each of those flybys, it'll use its payload of 10 different scientific investigations to take amazing close-up pictures of the surface. It'll observe it with cameras in a variety of wavelengths. It'll use a radar instrument to be able to see through that ice into the subsurface. So we're really excited to get to study Europa up close, finally. Members of the mission team came up with the idea of sending a message in a bottle to Europa to tie together the idea that both Earth and Europa are ocean worlds. We had a brainstorming session to talk about our ideas for who could write our message. And when somebody suggested that the U.S. Poet Laureate could write a poem, we all agreed that was a fantastic, amazing idea. The poem is engraved on a piece of the spacecraft made out of a metal called tantalum, which is a very strong, heavy metal that is good protection against radiation. It's a roughly triangular piece of metal that was one of the last parts of the spacecraft to be put on. Ada Limone wrote a copy of her poem for us in her own handwriting, and we engraved that on one side of the metal plate along with a microchip with the etched names of 2.6 million people from around the world who signed on to our message in a bottle. The other side of the plate has the waveforms for the word water in over 100 languages from around the world, including American Sign Language. The symbols and the words on the vault plate represent the human hands that built the spacecraft and the human names and voices that we're carrying with us out into space with us on our journey to Europa. Ada. Please read In Praise of Mystery, a poem for Europa. In Praise of Mystery, arching under the night sky, inky with black expansiveness, we point to the planets we know. We pin quick wishes on stars from Earth Reread the sky as if it is an unerring book of the universe, expert and evident. Still, there are mysteries below our sky. The Whale Song. the songbird singing its call in the bow of a wind-shaken tree. We are creatures of constant awe, curious at beauty, at leaf and blossom, at grief and pleasure, sun and shadow, and it is not darkness that unites us, not the cold distance of space, but the offering of water, each drop of rain, each rivulet, each pulse, each vein. O oh, second moon, we too are made of water. A vast and beckoning seas. We too 
are made of wonders, of great and ordinary loves, of small, invisible worlds, of a need to call out through the dark. Wow! What a beautiful poem! Please share your thoughts on why poetry is such a powerful form of creative expression. I love poetry for many reasons, but one of the reasons I love it the most is that it is the language of feelings. It makes space for how we feel. And when you listen to a poem or hear a poem, what you are responding to is the words and how they make you feel. And so for me, poetry is really important because it allows us to access many different feelings that we have moving through our body. When you are trying to write your own poem, the one thing I would recommend the most is that you make sure you have some silence before you begin. We live in a very loud world. We, there's chatter, there's movement, there's a lot of noise everywhere we go. And so try to carve out a little space where you can hear yourself, the voice underneath the voice. That's where the poem will begin. Peter, please show our viewers how to create an original, illustrated poem for Europa. When I start to think about the project, if it's my project or the poem, but this especially when it's uh, something about space and about the stars, I usually divide the space into some sort of storyboard. So you know, if you have a book or if you have a, let's say, painting, what it's gonna look like. So I can divide the page into windows, which will tell me what will be on each segment. So if, if the story starts with the sun, I know the sun will be here. If the sun meets the moon, then I have the sun and the moon. And then maybe the rain comes. So I have a cloud with the rain. And then I have maybe number of planets which look like a face. So in the beginning, I have this whole concept and then I can go into details. So this will be sun. And then it depends on everybody, how much time you want to spend making the sun, how many colors you want to use. Same with the moon on the next page, meeting the sun. And I always do it like with the faces and stuff and some people don't, so everybody has their own style. And because this is about the space and how big it is, you don't have to think about it. Same with the clouds, which we don't know how they would look up in the darkness of the space. And in this beautiful poem, there is a story about the trees inside of the raindrops. So here's a little tree with the raindrop. And then if I want to, want to do the face here, I can again play with it and make it into the, the face later on when I draw. And the colors come to you with all the different paints and pencils you have. And then you can start, of course, coloring and take the time for the sky and the time for the stars for the Milky Way, for all the things you can think about, because like it's like a dream book about stars and about the Europa. It's, it's so far and so much open to imagination and fantasy that you can come up with almost, with almost anything. And you can also read or listen to stories about moon and about stars and about sun, and there are many, and it's all very wonderful. Peter, NASA scientists shared fascinating information about Europa and what exploring interfaces means. Please demonstrate how to draw a habitability scene. If we think about the beautiful moon of Europa hanging 
out there in the sky is one of the moons of Jupiter and we can imagine almost anything because we don't know. And maybe if we do the drawing, we think it's just not enough to have a feeling of something which is so big and so made of different structures. So we can decide to make it as a collage and we can take the color paper and basically draw the shape of what we think Europa might look like, which would be like a what we see in the sky, and it's a round moon. And so we cut it with the scissors. So this is my sort of cut Europa. And then I decide maybe to show the, the body of water we're looking for. So I would, I would decide to, to have lakes. So I, I will make two lakes here. I have two lakes. And if I decide to take a piece of red, make it into the mountain. can become almost like a little duckling or something. But it depends how, again, you use your imagination. And you can put in also little yellow spots, which would be other rocks and other mountains, or you can put in the uh, green clouds going over Europa in the space. So when we look from planet Earth we see this beautiful, beautiful picture. And in the end, when we're happy how it all looks, we take the glue, we use some paper we disregard, and we can glue all these things together. Everybody should do it in their own way in their own colors, in their own shapes. And sometimes you can glue in even pieces of cloth or pieces of, of trees. I mean, collages are open to anything. And this was just to show you how it can be done. Dr. David Grinspoon, Dr. Cynthia Phillips, Ada Limon, and illustrator Peter Cease Thank you for showing us that curiosity and creativity flow like water. Goodbye. It's been fun. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you, Horan. And thanks to all the students who are watching us. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Horan. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Horan. Thank you to all the students. Thank you so much. Teachers, librarians, and parents, be sure to check out more creative ideas at Crayola.com forward slash creativity week. And remember to share children's artwork. Post a photo on social media using hashtag Crayola Creativity Week for a chance to win today's amazing giveaway.